This is the Stanford Automotive Innovation Facility. I'm in charge of the driving simulator lab where we work on experiments um, in our driving uh, simulator, but also on some on-the-road simulators, looking at how people will behave in future driving contexts. This is a, an environment where people are real, in close proximity with machines and cooperating with them all the time. And so it's a really great environment to do user research. And one of the things that's been wonderful about it is that we're able to monitor people, um, see how they perform, measure that very carefully, look at how they react. So we are using these technologies to help us like look to see where people are looking when they're driving, uh, look to see how they're responding by using facial action coding. And we're interested in how they respond physiologically to things that are happening, like if they're driving down the road and someone pops out, how does their heart rate change? And how does their galvanic skin response change? So in an academic environment, there's always the temptation to roll your own sensors, to make your own you know, software. And one of the things is that we've discovered over the long term doing research that's really important to use standard, um, really well-respected platforms to do, do development on. First of all, it just makes it so that you're actually able to focus on research, not spending all your time fixing things that you kind of strung together. And we're at this point where it's not the fact that we have additional computation or additional sensing, but our ability to knit you know, these things together that becomes really important. And so basically figuring out how to integrate data um, derive a larger picture from that is, is really what's important. So this is one of the world's most advanced simulators. Uh, we have a digital instrument panel up here. We have a touch screen here, and we can go and display anything that we want on these screens to provide information to the drivers. We have a wraparound 270 degree arc screen surrounding us. So you can see that it's really immersive. Like, I mean, it feels like we're in a city. So on this screen, we have a front view of what the driver sees. So this is the overhead from the driver's perspective. And then on this screen, we have the eye tracking up on the top, as well as the driver's eye view. And then on the bottom, we have information piped in from the simulator. So we can see the throttle angle, we can see the brake force, we can see the steering angle, and we can see event triggers. So in the simulation, we have to build events in, so a car cutting you off or a pedestrian coming out into the road. When something happens uh, that the driver has to react to, we need to see how long does it take for the driver to react, and then how do they react. And we get all that information piped in from the simulator to iMotion's uh, attention tool, and then we can go and add the uh, look at the other indicators, so what is the driver looking at, we can integrate that with the EEG data, uh, GSR, and heart rate, and also look at the driver's emotional state using the facet uh, analysis. So having more information streams that are, act, that are integrated into the same tool simplifies our understanding of, of what's going on. So what we can do is we can put out publications faster. We don't have to go and spend weeks or months coding data and trying to line up the time on different data streams. So we can go turn out papers faster. We can also, have, with all the new information, we can have more thorough research. So it's really important that the data be good. And it's really important that all your data is synchronized. And it's really important that that tool chain is like um, well understood and completely transparent. We take these things really seriously, you know, how we collect the data, making sure that it's good, uh, validating that it's synchronized. Um, and anything that helps us do that is basically saving us time and money and helping us get research done. The wonderful thing about our driving simulator is it lets us buy a little piece of the future or sometimes a little piece of the alternative present. You can do things that aren't safe to do on the real road, or you can put things in the car that aren't in the car right now. Or we can fake technologies that don't exist yet, like cars that can talk to you in real speech about the real context about why things are happening. From this point out, we'll be looking at ways that machine and humans can collaborate and scaffold each other to perform more. Um, if you just think about the driving tasks, there are things that people can see and sense and predict, and there's things that machines can see and predict. And I think the big challenge is right now, it's very difficult for people and machines to communicate. So that's a lot of what we're working on. And we're able to use these um, wonderful tools in this controlled environment to see how they respond.